What's up, you guys? It is time for some more modern tiki. It's hot outside. I want tiki drinks. I want tropical stuff, and I want them to be good. And so I go to my friend, Shannon Mustafer for that answer. If you guys don't know who Shannon Mustafer is, you should. She is the uh, bar program director, I believe still, uh, but definitely did build the bar program at Gladys Caribbean in Brooklyn. And she has a book out called Tiki Modern Tropical Cocktails. You guys should go pick it up. Actually, go below. Click the affiliate link, help us out a little bit. Help us help you to drink awesome cocktails. Um, I uh, messed with the specs a little bit and I'll tell you why in just a minute, um, but Shannon is an expert at making kind of like respect modern tiki cocktails that are just fantastic and you're gonna see why. So let's get into making this drink. So first thing we're gonna do is three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime. Uh, we're going to do half an ounce of fresh pineapple. A lot of people have been asking me, how do you juice a pineapple? Which I always thought was just kind of, you know, like any, everyone would know how to juice a pineapple, but I guess I just take it for granted that I know how to do that. But basically you put it in a juicer, like a Breville juice fountain, like one of those juicers that has like the, the little, I don't know what the presser on the top and you press it through. The thing is, is that it's really fibrous. So when it comes out, it comes out really fruff, fluffy and it comes out really, uh, it comes out really uh, like a lot of pulp in it. There's a lot of pulp. And so you definitely have to fine strain the pulp out. Uh, but there is nothing like fresh squeezed, uh, fresh juiced pineapple. It's not squeezed. It's not a citrus reamer. You don't use a citrus reamer. You use those other ones that you go like, Ew. Squeezing a pineapple sounds like, sounds very laborious. Well, you could, if you wanted to do like a cold press, you could actually put it in one of those cold press machines. Basically a cold press machine uses a, uh, basically it looks like a big corkscrew inside there and it just crushes it down. So you could actually squeeze a pineapple into juice if you wanted to, but... Don't try and hand squeeze it. You can't ream it, is right. what you can't do. Mm -hmm. You can't ream it like you like you ream a lime or a ream a lemon, which sounds kind of dirty, but it's true. Okay, so uh, next thing we're gonna do is, the recipe calls for one to one, I'm sorry, the recipe calls for one ounce of simple syrup, but Shannon does a one to one, sorry. I messed this whole thing up. Let's start this all over again. So. The recipe calls for one to one honey syrup. The thing is, is that my honey syrup is three to one, right? So I do three honey to one hot water. So that when I make it, right? So the thing is, is that mine is gonna be a lot more punchy for honey. So instead of doing the one ounce that the recipe calls for, I'm gonna do three quarters, a, a scant three quarters, which means just under the line of three quarters of honey syrup. Uh, but if you do a one to one honey syrup, then you wanna do one ounce as uh, called out in the recipe. So we're gonna do just under the three quarter mark. Uh, we're gonna do half an ounce of creme de cacao. We're doing the Tempest Fusion. Can you use the white one? Uh, you know, honestly, she, you can, you can use any creme de cacao you want, I think, but she recommends using the Tempest Fugit and I have it in my She's thing. Just asking for a friend. But yeah, you can use the white one, I'm sure. It's, I don't think it's gonna matter. And then this is the main, main, main thing. So we did a little uh, coconut fat washed vodka. Um, I will describe below exactly how to do it. Uh, but basically it's just putting coconut oil into vodka and letting it solidify and then skimming off the fat. And then you have a very nice coconut flavored vodka. And you know, the story behind this drink is actually really kind of cool because basically she created this drink because she was tasked for, with creating an interesting vodka drink for a party which I think a lot of bartenders can relate to. There's a lot of times in our career where somebody asks us for an interesting vodka drink, whether that's at your bar or for a party or what have you. And that's kind of a hard thing to do because vodka by definition is just not that interesting, right? That's fair to say. Right. I mean, I guess there's little nuances in flavor depending on what grain or what element you use to distill it, like, you know, apparently potato the, or whatever. Apparently the $300 vodka is really good. Right, and then the $20 vodka was the runner up. Mm -hmm. So go figure on that one. Is this uh, we're gonna do a full two ounces of our uh, coconut fat wash vodka. What did you say, Maris? I didn't mean to step on your words. Is this the, uh, the crystal head from uh, Orange Whip? This is not the crystal head, no. This is uh, Mulholland distilling vodka that I used. And we're gonna do a little scoshy pants of uh, the pebble. And we're gonna give it a nice whip shake. I'm gonna just chill it down a little. Give it that dilution that we're looking for. Because we're going to pack this in crush ice. We don't need to shake a, lot of, shake a lot of dilution into it, you know? It's going to sit on, not crushed, but pebble. I always do that. I always say crushed when I mean pebble. 
and pebble when I mean crushed. And so we're just gonna pour that into our glass. And then we're gonna add a little pebble. Then for our garnish, I just took a pineapple and put it through like a little, just sliced it on a mandolin. So we're just gonna like kind of do that. And maybe, oh, maybe like a pineapple front behind like that? Uh, yeah. I don't know. We're gonna pack this all thing, this thing in with pebble ice here. I mean, that looks nice, right? Yeah. It looks nice, yeah? Yeah. I think that it looks nice. All right, and then I got my tiki straw from Surfside. My old bamboo tiki. Ooh, it's spilling. Oh my God, that is fantastic. Oh man, that is interesting. Pineapple chocolate limey surprise is what I want to call that. Um, I even get a bit of that coconut. I, like what's really kind of interesting is that the coconut comes through the, uh, the cacao and honey, which I kind of figured it would run over. And the lime juice is like just tart enough. It's a little bit sweet and tart at the same time, but it's a very, very interesting drink. I really do like it a lot. Um, coconut chocolate though, and that little pineapple, give it a little bit of froth, give it a little tropical kind of punch. So good job, Shannon Mustafer. You made a really interesting vodka drink. I really like this drink a lot. This is a really nice one to sip on the porch in the summertime, a porch sipper, if you will, or I guess, we're kind of porch sipping because of coronavirus too. So if you go to a bar in California, the patio is open. So this not is anymore. a patio sipper now. Yeah, not you anymore. You can go though. to a patio. No, you can go to patios. Okay. As long as you can dine out outdoors, mm -hmm. then you can, and they can open the patio. You can only op you can only drink on the patio. You can't sit inside right now, right. anywhere. And all the bars are closed. But if there's a patio, you can serve food and get a drink on the patio. So patio sipper. And this is a really, really good one. So there you have it. Shannon Mustafer's One Love. I don't think I said the name of the cocktail oh, this entire time. It's called a One Love after the Bob Marley song. I was going to sing it and then I decided, you know what? I'm going to be terrible at singing that song. So it's not going to happen. Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll talk to you guys another time. I've realized that this entire video, I've been looking at Marius and not really at the camera. So it's going to look like I'm looking off this whole time. Sorry. Yeah. But you know, you that's okay. That they know you're there and they know you're very interesting. Right. So how could I not look at you? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I, 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 we only shoot uh, on a couple of days a week and I miss your face through the week. So what can I do except for stare at you? Here you go. Plus I can't talk to the camera while I'm addressing you. It feels too weird. I mean, I could stand behind the camera like this. Yeah, but then I would be looking up over the camera and not into the lens and yeah. it would still look weird. And you have the little weird antennas from the wireless sound in your face. Yeah. I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. This uh, cocktail is going to die quickly, so. I will see you guys on another time. If you like our channel, hit like and subscribe. So that really helps us out. I know that a lot of you are not subscribing and are probably regular watchers. So if you are watching you. regularly, how many percent? 60% of you are not subscribed. 60% of you are watching our channel, probably a lot of repeat watchers in there and not subscribed. That's, that's crime. You should be subscribing. We do awesome stuff. And we're very, very wonderful people. Yeah. Subscribe, even if you want to turn off the, the little bell. Even though you should turn it on, you can turn it off if you subscribe. But yeah, but as long as you subscribe. So yeah. subscribe to our, our channel. We, we, we're good guys and we do really, really good drinks on this channel. So there you have it. I don't know. And then uh, check out our uh, virtual bottle program. Not going to go into that too much today. But if you want to help our show out and buy us a, a bottle of something, you can do that virtually on our website, theeducatedbarfly.com and then hit virtual bottles and then you can buy whatever you want and we will purchase the bottle in your name and we will shout you out when we use it for the entire life of the you bottle. You said you were not gonna get into it and then you did the whole spiel. I didn't do the whole spiel. I no. didn't go into all the little details. Oh, like I the, did not. How the money goes into I, the account and then we Oh, transfer. shut up. <laughs> You're such, you, I, it's funny because you know what I was saying to somebody the other day is that my right. producing partner is my biggest troll as well. <laughs>
which is kind no, of a weird feeling. You are better. my biggest troll. <laughs> so I don't really have to go that well, far. I if I want to feel bad about myself, I just talk to Marius for five minutes and I will end up feeling bad about myself. No, good too. And that's why people who watch this channel can't tell whether we hate each other or we like each other. <laughs> and that's funny. Right. They're like, Jesus, that was a little uncomfortable at the end of the video. Do you guys, are you guys still friends? I know. Somebody kind of said. Heated, they said, yeah. You know what else I read? I was going through Reddit and I just happened to type in the educated bar black because I just wanted to see if anyone was talking about us, dude. And I saw the meanest comments ever, dude. Right. <laughs> Somebody said, ugh, not the educated bar fly. That guy is so boring. He's like watching a video of a Boston guide. And I was thinking to myself, like, I don't really care that that guy thinks that I'm boring, but God damn, I make better drinks than a Boston guide does. I know that that is lost on you and yeah. you're looking confused. Or what's the Boston I guide? will show you a Boston guide and then you'll look at all the flirtinis and stuff that they put in there. And then you'll see why I was a little offended at being likened to a Boston guide. I know it's like, it's like the very first book. Like when you become when you a rookie bartender, Boston. that's the very first book you get is the Boston Guide. Yeah. It's been around forever. It's kind of out of date. It was a little insulting. I was insulted by it. There's a bunch of people in the comments now being like, hey, wait a minute, I like the Boston Guide. All right, I'm cutting this. I'll see you guys later. Let's shoot this thumbnail before this thing dies. Bye.